Privet Katila Wanlingruski Desu. So today I wanted to, in this video, I want to discuss about China. Specifically about their social credit system that everyone has been talking about. And how, with an American spin and flavor obviously, we have our very own American social credit system right here in the States. Before we begin, we must first ask ourselves, what is even is, what even is the Chinese social credit system? So, well, it's basically been in the works for about a decade now, but it's seen its widespread release nationally in China just about two to three years ago. So basically, what, what it does is that the government would give you a score, it's almost like a credit score in a way, but instead of it being based upon, like, say, how often you pay credit card bankers off, it's based upon how you act in society. So do you, you know, like for example, do you help the poor? Do you give to charity? Do you volunteer? Do you donate blood? Well, congrats, you get a high social score. H have you said bad things about government-sponsored actions? Do you drunk drive, do petty social crime, or, you know, don't visit your aging parents and don't pay your bills? Well, then you get a low social score. You see where I'm going with this. What this leads to is that basically, and it's not just like, you know, like, oh, we're rating you, but these have real world effects. Like, for example, if you have a low social score, you get at risk of being denied getting jobs, denied being able to even travel, being denied getting access to public services and private schools. And those who have good social scores are given priority in hiring and promotion, and have easier times getting loans and public housing and public transport and shorter hospital wait times and so on and so forth. Um, so basically the government is giving you a score and punishing you for not meeting certain generally accepted social practices. The goal of this, according to the Chinese Communist Party, is to help promote good habits within the public and dissuade bad habits. You know, like, good habits being visit your parents, help the poor, support your country, and then don't do things like commit petty social crime, drunk driver, litter, etc. Now you can see how this sounds like totalitarian to us freedom-loving Westerners, right? I mean, I don't... I mean, the idea that this, the micromanaging of all this is completely, like, just really totalitarian. And this is, like, a big point of contention that, that is used against the Chinese government. Um, now, in my personal opinion on this matter, I'm obviously against it, as you can tell. But in my opinion, you know, what, you know I'm going to say how uh, the American social credit system is a lot worse than this, actually. And... You know, in ter these goals might seem lofty, right? Like, oh, you know, we want people not to do, like, you know, be like a, a drunk retard. You know, we want them to do good stuff. Well, yes, but I would prefer being done through a, a, a social, like, civil society type of way. Like, through, the real, through church, through their own moral deeds, people are good. And that's fostered through a good sense of family upbringing, a good sense of community, a good sense of, like, through the church. That's how people are able to be good. Uh, not... Uh, through a government enforced scheme but that's just my personal opinion so why are we even talking about this chinese social credit system well in america what's going on is that in a lot of right-wing circles even in populist right-wing circles especially with josh hawley um we're seeing a lot of anti-china rhetoric and i think this has this has this has been exacerbated because of the coronavirus but even before then um, it's, I think it's because of the effects that neoliberalism that has brought into America. The biggest of these ills is when the manufacturing has fled from pl to places like China. And so China as a broad government is kind of, is a good target for us to take out on our, you know, take out our rage on. Um, so, you know, and what we see, and what we see from this is, you know, obviously there's a lot to, you know, be mad about and we kind of blame it on China. And then this is why we see conservatives going autistic for Hong Kong, for example, or talking about the Uyghur camps, or talking about how bad the Chinese communist government is. And yes, and then also the social credit system, which is the topic of this video. So there are things to be said about all these things, but the reflexing support of Hong Kong and the Uyghurs and, the, and against the social credit system and all that is because we see China as the next great, great foe. And I think it's kind of rich when we kind of chastise, you know, talk bad about these types of things, especially in, in regards to the social credit system. You know, it's like, wow, can you believe it? You know, that people can't talk about Winnie the Pooh in China without being censored. I mean, isn't that crazy? They can't deviate from the official, you know, party line. You know, isn't that crazy? I mean, they're going to, you know, they're going to be able to lose their ability to go to the, you know, get a job or something. Well, 
This is amusing because America itself has a social credit system of its own. So America's social credit system, unlike the Chinese Communist Party's type of, you know, unlike in, in typical American faction, fashion, it's democratized and privatized, and um, collectively, um, you could. It's basically called cancel culture. Now we've all heard of cancel culture, but it's kind of it operates in a in a privatized way as an American social credit system. Basically, what happens is that un, unlike where the, it's a government sponsored thing. Mobs come out from the woodworks, they point out some politically incorrect taboos you believe in, or they point out some offensive joke you said, or you supported the wrong group, or you pointed out and criticized some flaws in the progressive cult, and right now it's the Black Lives Matter thing, but it's just any part of it. All these, these things get pointed out in the hopes, you know, and when they point those out to you, what happens is that a bunch, enough, enough outrage comes about, and then private companies, private, you know, in, people basically be able to ruin your life ruin your livelihood you know lose your job lose your ability to you know be relevant because you said or did something controversial and then no one wants to associate with you because they don't want to deviate from the party line and this time it's not a the official state line it's the the culture line the the uh, the line of the uh, you could say the 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 cathedral you could say so, you know, when you say all lives matter and question of black lives matter, you're fired. You say white lives matter, you're denied access to bank accounts for your hateful activity. So for those who push the cult of the progressive, so we could see all the bad stuff. Um, but what if you put, like, what's your, what, what do you get for pushing the, you know, like being supportive of this cult, the cult of the progressive worldview? Well, you're rewarded basically with social brownie points. Um, and thus, um, you are promoted into prominent roles even if you just push a bunch of crackpot ideas. For example, the woman who wrote the White Fragility book, it's really just a book of absolute nonsense. There's nothing to it. But because she's talking, you know, talk, speaking about the, you know, pushing the official party line, she's being promoted, despite her things being completely crackpot. So how do you get on the good side in the American social credit system? You speak out on social media, you know, you link your the black, you know, you link petitions in your bios, you know, you, re, you repost so-called, you know, so-called facts like oh did you know that you know black people are 23 percent um and then um and then when you get retweets and likes on instagram and twitter and blah blah all these types of things this is like a dopamine rush so it's not just like you get rewarded for it as in like you get social you get the socially brownie points from your peers and from companies and all that you also you know get a dopamine rush and also, as I mentioned a few times, it's like a cult. You're like trying to spread the gospel of like, oh, we need to help the black people, we need to help the poor, we need to help the environment, blah, 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 blah. So as I mentioned earlier, like, like unlike the Chinese system, which is a government-approved social credit scheme, in America's social credit scheme, it's private mobs and private companies that destroy individuals' lives and livelihoods. And there is, at a company and governmental level, policies that would regulate your life to basically screw you over as an individual. You know, things like the credit score, like credit scores, which operate almost exactly like, you know, the social credit, like the social credit score. Your criminal record, your private social media companies having full sway on what you can say on social media, which is the new public score. So basically, regulate private oligarchs could control what you say. Um, and most damning is when the U.S. government has been exposed to be tracking and spying on every inch of our emails, texts, and internet searches, and so on. So, you know, to, you know, which was exposed by Edward Snowden. So, to say we live in a free country when raging ban bands of mobs go around canceling everyone who does not toe the line, and giant corporate and government entities are regulating our lives, I say it's all a farce. A farce. So next time people want to talk about the so-called Chinese communist, you know, about the so-called Chinese communist tyranny about social credit system, which is bad, ask them why they aren't as worried about America's very own social credit system. So thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you guys really liked this video and enjoyed it. And if you did, please like this video and share it far and wide. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. So aim high, wander on from America with Russian love.